Just to start off, I'd like to say I am not a legal expert in any regard. I, I, like, I barely know the laws as it is, okay? Can my boss require me to take a pregnancy test? Hey everyone, quick questions regarding pregnancy testing at my workplace. I'm in Texas. I work at a daycare center full of only women and my job is very welcoming when it comes to women's health. However, whenever a girl complains about being in pain or if she feels sick during the workday, our boss will ask us to take a pregnancy test before deciding if we can go home. There have been instances where I have fainted and thrown up and I am asked, basically made, to take a pregnancy test. If I refuse to, then I can't go home. If I were to leave, then it would be considered walking out on the job. They do this because in case the test is positive, they would rule out our symptoms as pregnancy and we'd get back to work. They also ask if we are on our periods whenever we are feeling sick, so that can pin our illness on that. I was just wondering if this is discriminatory in any ways? It just feels so invasive having to do this just so I can go home if I'm feeling sick at work, especially when I'm taking care of kids. Just gotta keep saying it, not a legal expert, but yeah, that seems really dubious. I don't think an employer is like, uh, Legally, I don't think an employer is allowed to make you take a pregnancy test. Like, what is happening? Hire a lawyer fast. I live in Texas too, and was a manager for a business for four years. We absolutely avoided even saying the word pregnant about an employee because of fear of any kind of lawsuit. They cannot do that. And even if an employee were pregnant, they cannot prevent someone from going home if they are too sick to work. Especially if you're running, like, you're at a daycare, like, you, uh, what, we're just risking the children catching a sickness and possibly dying because, you know, kids' immune systems, not as good as a full-grown adult. What is wrong with your employer? This falls under sex discrimination because an employer wouldn't make a male employee take a pregnancy test before deciding whether he's sick enough to go home. More info here. Does your employer have at least 15 employees? If so, I'd notify the EEOC. Requiring disclosure of medical information as a condition of employment is a pretty clear violation of the Equal Employment Opportunity Act. And the fact that it's specifically a pregnancy test would probably run afoul of the Pregnancy Discrimination Act as well. Daycare centers are licensed and regulated by the State Department of Social Services. Start there. Do you feel comfortable asking them to write the rule down? As in, can you please write down this policy for me so I can be sure I understand it completely? I think you are saying I'm required to take and show you a pregnancy test on the job in order to leave if I feel sick or else I am fired? Once you tell a lawyer, this is highly illegal and your instincts are right that this is invasive, the employers will very likely deny they do this. Written proof or other employees who will testify, if needed, that this was also something they experienced, probably helpful. Yeah, I mean, if you can gather as many people around, like, in the workplace that also finds a problem with this, that will help build your case, because this is not okay. This seems problematic in terms of sexual privacy. Check with your state's labor department. We have constitutional rights which can be somewhat infringed upon for legitimate purposes, and your employer has interests that are important. But for your employer to infringe upon your privacy and require you to disclose sexual slash fertility slash reproductive information in order to protect their legitimate business purposes seems so far out of balance. This is appalling. Please report them. This is a gross violation of your rights. I couldn't have said it better myself. I, this it just feels really gross. I'm not a lawyer, but your employer is a monster. Get a consultation with an employment lawyer to see what can be done now, and start to window shop for a new job. This is awful. This is super illegal. Also, if slash when, and I hope you do seek legal action, you should be sure to mention the asking if it involves your period, because there is no reason an employer needs to know if your abdominal cramps are from your period or from bad leftovers in order to give you sick time. Get it in writing or record it and bring it to a lawyer. Make that money, honey. That is a good point. Always try and get things in writing or like something that you can save to have proof of later. Because without proof, it, that'll make the case a lot worse. 
Can I sue the bank for wrongfully calling the police on me? So today, 12-29-23, I received a settlement check in the mail from my attorney. The check was drawn on his bank, United Community Bank, with all of his identifying information. I take the check to deposit it at my bank, and they inform me there will be a 7-10 to 10 business day hold on the check. So I decide to instead cash it at the bank it's drawn on. I walked into United Community Bank, hand the teller my check, and say I'd like to cash it. After about two to three minutes, the teller says his computer is down and he will need to use the one in the back. I'm assuming it's at this point he called the police instead of the bank to verify the check. A few minutes later, the teller comes back out and says sorry to inform you, but this check is fraudulent. I keep my cool, but tell him there has to be a mistake, as I'm sure my attorney would not give me a fraudulent check to cash. The next thing he says is, I'm 100% sure you are attempting to cash a fraudulent check. At this point, he is embarrassing me in the lobby in front of other customers, so I say, okay, thank you, and ask for my check and license back which he hands me. I then go into the parking lot to call and verify the check myself because I'm super confused at this point. It turns out there is another bank with the exact name in Illinois that is not affiliated with the United Community Bank in my area. So I decide to leave the bank and take the check back to my bank and just deposit it. As soon as I get in my car, three police cars block me in the parking lot. Two cops jumped out with their guns pointed at me and a third cop drags me out of my car and shoves my face into the cement. No warning, nothing. They just ripped me out of the car and held me at gunpoint in front of everyone inside the bank. At this point, my face is covered in blood, my shirt is ripped, and I'm in handcuffs. After about 30 minutes, the detective that came to the scene was able to verify the check was real by just calling the number on the check and speaking to the branch manager. Finally, the cops uncuff me and let me go, but at this point, I would like to sue the bank. Is that possible? I plan to contact the attorney that gave me the check, but he will be out of the office until 1-3-24. So in the meantime, I wanted to ask here. Thank you. I think you have a case to sue the bank, cause oh my god. Or at the minimum, like the police department that, you know, slammed you into the ground. Contact the law office you received the check from. That lawyer might be interested in knowing the bank accused them of giving you a fraudulent check and then treated you like a violent criminal just because of that. What about excessive force by the police department? Seems unreasonable to smash someone's face in the ground for a non-violent crime. Don't forget to file a complaint with FDIC as well. First of all, there are multiple United Community Banks in the country, and it's obviously a common name for a bank. The teller was a monstrous idiot. User Ornery Litigator's point about discrimination is a good one. Since there are multiple such banks in multiple states and you didn't give a location, I can't give you your state's bank regulator, but I would definitely start with them as well as talking to your attorney. Though I'm gonna guess you're in South Carolina, in which case you'd start here. Whether the teller talked to a manager, what they told the police, whether the bank had prior training about, hey, there's another bank, and other facts will determine your chances at a lawsuit. Can I put a restraining order against the previous owner of my house? I bought this house on June 2023. Since then, the previous owner has been coming every week for his mail up to this date. I've been missing my mail since he sometimes opens my mail and throws it in my trash. I got my water bill cut off last week for that reason, and it's getting me tired at this point. It has come to a point where he sent HelloFresh to my house, and since I have been tired of that, I kept it, and now he just keeps knocking hard on my doors and windows. What can I do? I mean, honestly, keeping the HelloFresh is a solid strategy. I mean, if he's sending it to your house, it's your food now. You own it. It's your food. Again, not a legal expert. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Get the postmaster involved. Tampering mail is a huge no-no. I'd also file a police complaint. Yeah, if the previous homeowner is showing up to your house to check his mail, but in the process is also opening and throwing away your mail, that that is a big, isn't that like a federal crime or something? Stealing and opening someone else's mail is a federal crime. Oh, thank you for the answer. I, I was confused. Locked mailbox works. After filing a complaint, have post office hold the mail. Reject his mail when you pick it up. Do this for a month. Between your complaint and that, he's no longer getting any mail. Should stop him. Well, I, I'd put quotes on should stop him because if he's already this weird, I don't know, you, you might just have a weirdo on your hands. Contact your post office. The postal inspectors take it seriously. My grandmother died and left me everything in her will and now no one is communicating with me. Ohio. My grandmother, who adopted me when I was a baby, passed away in July. 
I didn't find out until a week after she passed because my estranged mother kept it a secret and had her cremated not even a week after she died, so none of us got to say goodbye. The rest of my family believe she had something to do with her death, but that's another issue for another day. Once I found out, I reached out to my grandmother's attorney, who sent me the will she had on file, and told me that they would help me since she left me everything. My great uncle was named the executor of a state, and it was clearly stated in her will that my mother, who is her only child, and my siblings, who are also estranged, are not to receive anything as well. My grandmother had stated she wished to be cremated, which she was, and placed with my grandfather, who was also cremated at Arlington National Cemetery in DC. I have all the documentation because she wanted me and my partner to be the only ones who made sure her wishes were fulfilled. However, the funeral home gave the ashes to my mother, and now she's holding them hostage, and Arlington keeps calling asking when to hold her ceremony. My question is, what am I able to do to get her ashes and valuable property back? Currently, there's a wrongful death lawsuit pending against the nursing home my grandmother died in, so I was told by her attorneys that I can't claim anything until the lawsuit has concluded. I have requested that I be included in the communications from them, but they insist that only my uncle needs to be involved, and him and I don't talk at all, so I know he won't keep me informed on anything. I just want to make sure she is properly buried and that I can get her heirloom she left for me. I'm worried my mom is going to try and steal some of it like she has in the past. I also lived with my grandmother up until I moved in with my partner a few years ago, so a lot of my property was still at her house, and I want to make sure I get that as well. I know this seems like a lot, but I would very much appreciate if anyone can please shed some light on this situation. I have plenty of friends who are attorneys or judges, but none of them specialize in probate law, so it's hard to get an answer. One thing you need to understand is that the lawyer you're talking to is technically representing your uncle. Your uncle is the executor. You aren't privy to their conversations they have with him because he's their client. You have to treat them like an opposing party. If you want your grandmother's ashes, you need to write a letter to the law firm requesting that the ashes be delivered to you in order to fulfill your grandmother's wishes. Just remember that the remains slash ashes are not deemed part of the estate, so the things left in the will to you need to be treated differently to the ashes. If the executor fails to protect the property, they are personally liable and can be sued. Sometimes it is useful to remind them of that. I suggest you start looking for an estate lawyer who practices in your grandmother's state. Yeah, that, that would be pretty useful, I'd say, getting an actual trained lawyer who knows this information rather than a Reddit post. It would probably be a good idea. You need your own lawyer. The company representing your uncle is representing your uncle. This is also further complicated by you having effects at your grandmother's house, and the fact that her ashes were delivered to the wrong party. Get a qualified lawyer working for you ASAP. You need to hire an attorney ASAP. It sucks that it's a holiday weekend. You're probably not going to get anywhere until Tuesday, but start looking now. Get recommendations if you can from people you trust. Then your lawyer can file some emergency motions to protect assets and get you the ashes. And then your lawyer can sort everything out. Laws vary by jurisdiction, but generally speaking, ashes are considered property of the estate. As the executor of the estate, your great uncle has a fiduci a fiduciary duty to protect the assets of the estate, including the ashes. He could seek a court order requiring your mother to give up the ashes by a certain date. Failure to comply would be contempt of court, which is punishable by jail time. Sorry, uh, these are really big words for me. I, I read at a third grade level. G give me some slack, okay? There is only one answer to your problem. Find and retain legal counsel now. Do not pass go, do not stop, get a lawyer before it's too late. Someone is in jail under my name for the last six months and it ruined my life. Someone got arrested using my name in Broward County, and because of that, I have three felonies under my name, and it cost me my job. I can't apply to a new apartment or job. I'm stuck as if I'm the one in jail. In July, someone went to jail and gave the police my name and information and got booked as me. But this wasn't his first time going to jail. He's been there at least three to four times before, including prison. I found out after I got pulled over and the police officer looked at me crazy, saying, aren't you supposed to be in jail? I was so confused. Then I looked myself up and seen everything. I was sick to my stomach. My job soon after suspended me and I've been unable to find a new job. 
I had to surrender my apartment because I had no money. Can't even get a new one because of my record. I called the courthouse and asked how this is even possible and can't get a straight answer. They keep saying it'll fall off. It's been six months. Do I have a case to sue? I would surely hope so. I mean, especially for the court just to be like, eh, it'll go away. But half a year is too long to go without being able to get a job with false felonies on your record. Stop calling the courthouse. They don't have an answer. You go to the police station in the county he used your name and ask to report criminal impersonation. Did he use your exact name, date of birth, and social? I've done this already. I have an identity fraud case open right now. The problem is they still haven't taken it off. They said it'll fall off, but it's been in my background for the last six months. I had a similar thing happen to me in Texas. I had been living out of state, and when I came back, I applied for a job and was informed I could not be hired due to my felony record. Apparently, someone using my social and name was arrested for felony DUI. I had to go down to the sheriff's office and get fingerprinted and have my picture taken. The district attorney then wrote a not me letter that I submitted when my background was run with my potential employer. Eventually it stopped showing up on my record. I don't know why that feels crazy that you can go to the district attorney and have them write a not me letter like, oh yeah, that crime that you see on my record, not me, wasn't me, nope, just kidding. <laughs> Our system is messed up. Did this person use your name or did they use their own name that happens to be the same as yours? Who are you hoping to sue? We have completely different names and birth dates. This person looks like a whole crackhead. Different height and skin color. The county or police department for allowing someone to even get that far using my name. He's literally going to court using my name. Lawyer here. The courthouse clerks and law enforcement are not your advocates. You need a lawyer to advocate for you. Ugh, like, I know it's probably true, but I hate when lawyers pop up like this because it, it just feels like advertisements. It's like, ooh, you, you can't handle this yourself. Pay me $30,000 now and I'll fix it. Your fingerprint shouldn't match his. If he has priors, his print should have matched him, not you. I mean, I guess I can see the problem coming in. If OP never had any crimes, never had his fingerprints put in, they probably just took the crackhead on his word and were like, yep, you're this guy. We'll get your fingerprints and keep it under that name. Not a lawyer. You can request a background check from FBI.gov for $18 and dispute charges on it. You'll need to go to the post office to submit fingerprints. Dispute the background check with the background check company and provide a copy of your identity theft report and all related documents. They have to block the information that resulted from identity theft within four business days. Speak to an attorney. You might have a case against the county for failure to properly identify the person being arrested. Yeah, I thought when people get arrested, there's like a little bit more of a thorough search into who they are rather than just, hey, what's your name? Sure, we'll believe that. <laughs> like, that's, come on, that's so silly. My son's 15-year-old former teacher, 35 male, tried to invite him over. My 15-year-old son called me from his friend's house tonight to tell me that he called the police. His former band teacher, for four years in a row, asked him if he wanted to come over for a party. Then, a party for just you and I. Then goes, I keep forgetting you are only 15. That's not okay. Unless you think it's okay. Ugh, gross. Oh, gross. Some backstory. My son is a musician and has always looked up to this teacher. I have been on band trips and marching band competitions and I was fond of this teacher too. When this teacher accepted a job at a different high school in the county, I knew that my son had messaged him on social media. He really looked up to this teacher and I felt like he was a great influence and example of how one can use their love of music as a career. My son has always been open and I have seen the messages in the past because of course my son is a child and this was an adult, so I kept my eye on it for that simple fact. Even though I trusted and loved this teacher, you just never know. And I'm glad we were paying attention. So I spoke to the police officer on the phone. They were already there when my son called me and she explained that a crime has not been committed but they were going to involve a detective. I got a case number and asked a few more questions. My son is a bit grossed out, but fine. My heart is broken for him being treated that way, but I'm so thankful it wasn't worse. What can I do as his mother? I was tempted to message the teacher. I found his Facebook and stared at it forever. I just see this long list of schools and accomplishments and I wonder if there are other students whose trust he has broken. 
I'd look at every county he's worked in and looked for his name on all of the sex offender registries. I started to look for his address and decided to post here before I do something stupid. What, within the boundaries of the law, can I do to make sure this person isn't trusted? I know they said legally no crime was committed, but since he's a high school teacher, doesn't that make this worse? I can't just sit back and do nothing, right? If you're ever in a situation where you have to say, oh, I keep forgetting you're this age, that's not okay, that's where you end the conversation. Point blank and simple, you registered it was wrong, so do not try to, like, do anything else. What is wrong with you? As far as the police are concerned, there needs to be something that actually happened versus potential or trust. You can report this to the school, that's likely the most that will get results. Teacher here. Even if the police say a crime hasn't been committed, the teacher has almost certainly violated district policy and the terms of his contract. Are any of the messages in writing? Notifying the school district is a good step to take. Don't do anything yet. The police can potentially do a sting. It may not be effective if the teacher knows he has been reported. I mean, like, I guess, but that also, like, why? I don't know. Your answer seems weird. I don't like you. I'd file a complaint with the school district as well. He's out of line and he knows it. Yeah, I mean, ideally, going to the school district at least informs them, like, hey, never hire this guy again. He can't be trusted around kids. Like, police might not do anything because no crime was committed, but it is the best idea to go to the school district and let them know you need to blacklist this guy. He's creepy. You report it to the teacher's governing body. They have standards of professionalism and he probably violated. You get his teaching credentials revoked. This is a great solution. The licensing board in your state will want to know, especially if you have screenshots of the messages. I think I would be bringing the conversation to a school board meeting. This is unacceptable behavior by an adult and in my opinion, he was trying to groom your son. Chances are, if he is consistently switching schools, it's the same as cops consistently moving departments. He was caught doing something bad, but the school didn't want the bad publicity, so he was allowed to leave and get another job somewhere else. I have never thought of it like that, and that is so despicably disgusting. I cannot believe that that actually happens, because it does, I bet. Are teachers a regulated profession in your location? In mine, they are. When this occurs, people often lodge complaints to the teacher's regulatory college where they can take action to suspend or revoke their teaching license in an official hearing. This example is in Ontario. My wife stopped working when we got together to find herself. We have no children. Will I still lose everything if I divorce? Hi, I have been married for 11 years, and since we got married, my wife stopped working, as she needed some time to find herself. That lasted till now and still is going on. I work pretty hard, 12 to 14 hours a day, including most weekends, and spend very little. Multiple times we had discussions about her finding a job or at least trying to spend less. I've been in a relationship that is toxic. She doesn't work, she doesn't take care of the house, and she doesn't want kids. She just travel with her friends and when home mainly watches TV shows. She has little to no grasp of the real world. For some example, I have to do my own grocery and cook my own food for the last six years or so. We've been sleeping in different room as well for as long as I can remember. She sleeps on the master bedroom and I sleep on the bed couch. It was supposed to be temporary for a reason I don't remember, but ended up being like that and never changed. I thought about divorcing for a while, but she never worked and most of my money are in the house and my 401k. If we divorce, will I lose half of everything I worked hard to get? I'm exhausted, I'm close to 50 now, and I planned my life to be able to retire early, barely spending anything and working as hard as I could. If I divorce and lose half, I don't know how I'll be able to do that. I feel trapped. Edit. Thank you all for the answers. It seems the best way is to connect with an attorney. It might be more optimistic than I first expected. Thank you again. I think taking the first step and talking to an attorney is what I'm gonna do. Thank you so much. Ooh, yeah, that's not a great situation to be in. And from the sound of it, you didn't get a prenup, so that will make it a little difficult. 50% now or 50% later in life after you have more money. You still have time to build a nest egg for retirement. You need to find someone who wants to be with you. Start giving her a budget and not total access to all your money. Go talk to a lawyer. Please note that North Carolina family courts require for the parties to be separated for one year before a divorce can be filed. This threshold makes things challenging since you may have to pay for two dwellings. Good luck. 
If you are in an ED, equitable distribution state, as opposed to community property, you could argue that she shouldn't receive a 50-50 split. It would also benefit you to convince her to start working before you divorce her. I would have a consult with a local divorce attorney before making any moves. Since you've been married over 10 years, you'll likely owe spousal support to... Apartment staff locked me out after their feelings were hurt. I live in an apartment complex with common areas with grills slash tables that residents often use and hang out at. On a Saturday afternoon, about 18 adults, which included six residents, got together to grill and eat. The guest policy allows each resident to have two guests, and we were well outside of quiet hours, so we didn't believe there would be an issue. Apartment staff approached our group with security and told us we had to shut it down. I believe the number of people drew their concern, and not from any noise or behavior, as they were likely unaware of how many residents were there. We weren't loud, and this large open rooftop doesn't share walls with any units. While trying to understand why we had to end, things escalated, and some unfortunate words were exchanged. Apartment staff stormed off and disabled our key fobs, preventing us from re-entering the building. Is this legal? Would it be worth pursuing legal action if it isn't? Am I just an a-hole? You were locked out of where you live or locked out of the pool area? Locked out of the building. I can still get into my apartment since that uses a smart lock, but a key fob is used to access any external building doors and to use the elevator. I've made it inside, but if I leave the building, I likely won't be able to re-enter my apartment. Make sure you get a copy of your lease. You signed it and are entitled to the copy. And contact the actual management company, not just manager. Use employee names. Previous property manager speaking, this is a BS move. Use LinkedIn to find the regional manager for the company. That is best person to begin escalations. If you mention legal action to the office staff, they typically can no longer discuss the issue with you per company rules. They've locked you out of the building you pay rent on without a valid reason. This is at minimum breach of contract. Contact management. If these were employees and not management, they're most likely in trouble. If it was management showing you were reasonable and asking for a solution in writing is one more piece of evidence if it goes to court. This was an illegal eviction. Call a lawyer ASAP. California has a good protection for tenants. This must also be a breach of contract if you have paid their monthly fees regularly. Contact police and lawyer up and sue them. It's going to be a good payday. Document everything. Good luck, fam. What exactly did you say to them? There is some serious context missing here. I'm not saying their actions were justified, but damn. I was kind of wondering that myself. Like, if you said something really bad to them, I don't know, it could change the circumstances a little bit. But also locking you out of the place that you pay money each month to live in, that's not good either. My daughter was caught stealing from her job. My daughter was working at a retail makeup store and was just caught stealing. She says she did a return transaction without really returning what she purchased. $85 perfume. And this was all caught on camera. Her making a return with no merchandise anywhere to be found. She says LP brought her into the office and she denied it. And they asked her to make a written statement with her denial. And she also denied giving a written statement. Her store manager called her the next day and she has yet to return the phone call. I keep telling her to call back and apologize and ask to make things right by paying it back, but she is dead set on not calling. At this time, I don't know if I'm giving the wrong advice by telling her to call her store manager and admit guilt, even though she's on camera, and apologize. She seems to think if they decide to press charges, it'll happen whether she calls or not. What should we be doing? Should we get a lawyer? She has never been in trouble with the law, but still, I'm incredibly disappointed that she would do something like this. I'm just unsure of what exactly she should be doing at this point. She's a great person and has a very bright future. She's in college and, like I said, has never been in trouble with the law. She's extremely remorseful and I don't want this to ruin her life. I mean, if she was remorseful, she would have told the truth already, so... I'd maybe just get a lawyer just to save some time. What should we be doing? Not responding, not apologizing, not offering reparations. The first can help build a case against her. The second two are admissions of guilt. Basically, her strategy of ignoring everything you tell her is already the correct legal strategy. Should we get a lawyer? Not unless you are contacted by police or the store files a civil suit. I keep telling her to call back and apologize and ask to make things right by paying it back, but she is dead set on not calling. She is correct 
to not call or speak to them about this. Your advice is, frankly, not good advice, and following that advice will increase the chances of a criminal record for her, however unlikely that may be. The state decides to press charges or not, the store doesn't. If the police contact her, she should not speak to the police either. Whatever video they may or may not have isn't relevant at this point, and might not be relevant later. And no one knows what it might or might not show. The job is gone. She should walk away from it, if she hasn't been fired. Not a lawyer, but I used to work retail LP. Keep in mind that they do not have to tell your daughter the truth. The video they have may not show anything. It may not even exist. All their proof may be nothing. They may have very little evidence at all. This is why they press for a statement. Do not admit to anything. Do not apologize. They are absolutely going over every single return she has ever done to see if the returns and inventory line up. Get a criminal attorney on retainer and don't speak to anyone who works there, her or you, and delete any friends slash coworkers off social media immediately. I mean, like, of course, I don't know if that's good or not, but I feel like completely ghosting after you're being accused of stealing, that might show some guilt too. Like, optic-wise, that doesn't sound great. I hate to break it to you, but she has probably been doing this for a long time. While morally, it probably is the right thing to call and pay them back, legally, it will most likely work against her. Who knows how many times they have caught her doing this and have not said anything. That is another good point. A lot of retail stores do wait to actually apprehend you if you're stealing because they want to wait until you build up enough like of a bill, so that way it is like a criminal charge. Not saying that's what's happening here, but you know, just good to know. Well, I think we all learned a valuable lesson today. I don't know anything about the legal system. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, my name's Brandon. Bye!